action. It is DFB Pokel action as Eintracht Frankfurt takes on Bayern Munich in the second of two semifinal matchups in the German Cup competition that you're watching right here on One Soccer and the One Soccer social platforms. Gareth Wheeler with you, and man, we got a great panel to set you up for today's matchup, which is about half an hour away from now. Uh, I just found out this this morning. He is the all-time leading goal scorer as a Canadian in the Bundesliga, I should say. He is the CEO and co-founder of the great club Pacific FC. Mr. Rob Friend joining us this afternoon. How are things on the West Coast, Robbie? Yeah, no, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, things are great. As I mentioned, I'm in uh, Tofino on, on holiday, so uh, but happy, happy to watch the game and uh, be on this panel. Wonderful. Uh, our very own Oliver Platt hanging out with us this afternoon as well. Hello, Ollie. Hey, Will. And- how's it going? I'm doing excellent, and from the athletic and one soccer contributor and German soccer expert. I love that title, Josh Cloak. I was really hoping I was going to get the uh, the top Bundesliga Canadian goal scorer intro. I thought I kind of took <laughs> it back to to ten year old me for a second, and was hoping that was going to be uh, me you were talking about. But uh, well, it's quite the record. With all due respect, uh, Josh, I mean Rob, that that's something that you should put on your mantle. Think about the Canadians that have played and featured prominently in the Bundesliga. Everyone from Julian de Guzman to Owen Hargraves to Paul Stahl Terry. Yet you scored the most goal, and you scored goals in this competition as well. So you must watch on a day like today, where a former club of yours is playing, and watch with a great deal of pride. Yeah, you know what? It's actually quite surreal. Uh, funny, I, I found out that I was the, the leading scorer, as I was mentioning on Sportsnet a few weeks ago when Byron was playing the first game, and they gave a little uh, a little highlight reel on Afonso, and then they gave uh, they gave Rob Friend uh, a shout out, and uh, yeah, so apparently I, I'm the top scorer, all time Canadian. Um, but one, one thing Sportsnet mentioned was uh, surely Afonso Davies will be surpassing that mark. So. <laughs> I don't know if that was a compliment or a, a little dig at me that the left back's going to pass me, but no, it's definitely surreal. You know, when I look back and, and watch, you know, watch my former uh, team with, with a few of my former teammates uh, still going out in the field and uh, I'm, I'm sitting here on holiday and five years uh, retired that uh, I'm watching the game. So, but uh, you know, obviously I'm proud of that. Rob, before we break down the, t- today's matchup and looking forward to Alfonso Davies and everything that he brings to the table, what makes Canadians so adaptable, such a good fit playing professional football in Germany? We saw Kian Froze yesterday, uh, Jonathan de Guzman, obviously part of this Eintracht Frankfurt side, obviously so he's from Scarborough, Ontario. So what makes Germany such a good place for Canadians to play? Yeah, no, I think I think obviously if you look at the the the, the success of, of former Canadians and current Canadians, Germany, you know, uh, of the top four leagues has always been sort of the the the, the most successful uh, league for for Canadians. When you look at the big four, um, you know, I would I would attribute that to uh, sort of a similar culture. Uh, you know, Canadians are humble, they're hardworking, um, not not overly uh, fancy footballers. Um, you know, so it, it's it's just one of those countries that I do know the Germans really respect uh, Canadian athletes, Canadian players. Uh, they respect the country, and uh, and that and that's a that's a big thing for for German clubs when they're looking at players. It, it's obviously not just about the the the, the on field; it's what they bring off field, and they really like the the uh, the culture that Canadian players bring. So you you've obviously we've had success in the past, and and definitely uh, the, the future is bright for Canadians in the Bundesliga. Well said. Uh, Canadian players on the field. I mean, you've left your mark, uh, but Canadian supporters have an affinity for this German competition as well. D- Josh, maybe spin our viewers, if they're new to this competition, what it means for you and why there's such great interest in this tournament that's being played. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I've heard this tournament called the greatest soccer tournament in the world. I think it's a little different from the FA Cup in that, you know, very often the best clubs in Germany don't get those early round buys. You know, they're matched up against lower division clubs. And, you know, sometimes those games take place at smaller venues. So it brings that level of intrigue uh, to the games. And, and like, Rob, I'd like to hear from you as well about what makes the Pokal such a special tournament. And I guess the reason I ask that as well is we've seen, you know, in the last few seasons, Bayern's dominance in the Bundesliga, in the league itself, sometimes makes the league feel like a foregone conclusion. But they've only won two of the last five and that's what I think makes this tournament 
so exciting. So, you know, Rob, I'd love to hear from you, you know, your experience playing in the Bokal and what makes it such a, such a great tournament to be a part of. Yeah, no, I, 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 tournament as in tradition. I mean, Germany is a very traditional uh, league, the German Bundesliga. And, um, you know, when, when you look at the, the Pokal, it's, it's, it's embedded in, in tradition of, of German football. I'm not saying the FA Cup is in and, and some of the other, you know, the, the league cups aren't. But, but Germany and the Bundesliga and the, those clubs are very traditional. You look at FC Saarbrücken, an extremely traditional club. You know, in third division, they were getting up to 30,000 a game. Wow. Germany, uh, you know, when you look at the second and third division, they, they do have the highest attendance. So it, it's such a traditional country. <clears throat> the clubs are very traditional. So um, I, I think that that really ties into the cup and how important it is for these clubs uh, and the fans and, and the country as a whole. So, you know, you've seen with the FA Cup, it, it certainly lost its appeal with some of the big clubs with all the different uh, competitions. I think it saturated the FA Cup a little bit, but but Germany really takes pride in that cup and the clubs and those, 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 uh, you know, the lower division clubs as well. And, and again, very, very traditional clubs that, that, um, you know, want to represent the, their, their organizations in, in the Pokal. So, um, you know, I definitely say it comes down to that. And, and we here at one soccer, I mean, it's, it's great that we can bring the Pokal to you, at least in terms of the semifinal and the final, which is coming up on July 4th, where the winner of today's match will take on Bayer Leverkusen who defeated Sarbrucken yesterday 3-0, which you watched on One Soccer. And this tournament has taken even a larger life in this country, Ollie, because Alfonso Davies, in the form of the young Canadian playing at left back, he starts yet again today for Bayern Munich. So if you needed an extra carrot to dangle in front of the face of Canadians to watch today's match, I mean, Alfonso Davies it, is it, isn't he? Yeah, exactly. And, and obviously, as we mentioned, we had Cairns Fraser in uh, playing for Saarbrücken yesterday as well. So there's been a lot of kind of Canadian content in the, in the latter stages of the competition this year. And yeah, it's, it's another big day for Alfonso Davies. Um, I think Bayern have, you know, been extremely dominant since the, the Bundesliga return, two, three, even five goal wins. Um, I think maybe the, the lack of crowds is, is benefiting some of the top teams. It's taking another one of those variables out that can maybe cause upsets. Um, and Bayern and Davies have been playing very well. So today, maybe not in terms of the opposition, but in terms of the stakes, it feels like you know maybe a, a, another one of those big games, like the Dortmund game, like the Chelsea game, uh, where we really see you know what Alfonso Davies can do on these bigger stages. And, and I think every time he goes through one of those big games and, and ticks it off with another good performance, you just start to you know the, the momentum just continues to build for this guy, right? Um, and, and obviously, this and July Fourth will, will be big days. And, and that's what I was going to mention, Josh. I mean, uh, he's the golden boy right now. His, his name is being put alongside some of the best young players in, in the game today. You're almost waiting to see if he slips at this point. His quality is unquestionable, but now it's just about finding that consistency because really, as the world's been watching with these games being played without fans and really it's the only show in town, he has shined so brightly, hasn't he? And you're just wondering if and when he may take a step back. You know, when we look back to the beginning of Alfonso Davies' time at Bayern, there were a lot of questions about whether he'd be loaned out to a, a mid-table club just to gain minutes. But I think when you look at Alfonso Davies' progression, what he's benefited a lot from is being part of that Bayern mentality. And Rob, you can speak to this. When you go up against Bayern, I think opposition teams in the back of their mind know that there's probably not a great chance that they'll come away with the points they need because Bayern have always had that Mia San Mia mentality where they go in. They're, they're not just you know, hoping to win. They are expected to win every single game. And it's an intangible thing, but for Alfonso Davies, not to kind of buckle under that pressure, but to show, as you said, Ollie, that he can perform in the biggest games. You know, that's the kind of thing that you don't get from a lot of clubs. That's the kind of experience that you don't get for a lot of clubs. So you're right, Wheels. We are kind of waiting for him to kind of look human. But being at Bayern, being around the best players in the world, being around the Thomas Mullers, who was told this great story about, you know, being around Joshua Kimmich after being a, after a great, I think it was a 4-0 win and, and not seeing anyone celebrate. And he's like, well, this is what we have to do at Bayern. We, we don't celebrate. We, we just, we play the way we do so we can go out and have a bit of ice cream on Sundays and just enjoy our lives. It's expected that we're going to win. And I think that mentality has really been infused in Alfonso Davies from what we've seen in his performances. And it's exciting because it, you would expect a 19-year-old to kind of stumble, but he hasn't so far. 
Well, what's incredible is more and more plaudits are coming his way. CIES pr uh, presented the top 10 most valuable players in the world. And Alfonso Davies comes in at number nine, saying he's quoted as being worth 133 and a half million euro. That's even more than Harry Kane of Spurs is worth. Is this a little, has the hype train run a little bit out of control here? Or is that fairly accurate in your opinion, Ollie? Could Alfonso Davies be considered one of the nine top most valuable players in world football today? Well, I, I think there's there's kind of two different valuations, right? There's his value to Bayern and, and they look at him as clearly one of the most talented young players in the world. Someone who, as we say, has all this momentum behind him and, and has just been the perfect fit for them at left back in the way they play. And, and they see kind of the the possibilities, I guess, of what Alfonso Davies could become, whether it's at left back or a different position in the future. And you can maybe make the argument that that's 133 million worth of, of possibilities. Um, for other teams, I, I don't think you'd get bids in, in that region yet because they'd look at the possibilities and maybe see a bit more doubt instead. And, and they want to see him do it for longer and continue to, to, to prove himself. But from from Bayern's point of view, I can understand why you know that 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 valuation is is there because he's under contract. He's a young player. He's only getting better. He's versatile, um, and he just seems the perfect fit for for the way they play football. Josh, what do you make of that? Yeah, I mean, I guess I'm as guilty as anyone else for keeping that Alfonso Davies hype train moving along. But um, <laughs> I think uh, I think that the contract extension speaks to you know the Bayern being aware that look he he will be approached by whatever the, the two or three clubs that are bigger than Bayern moving forward. I mean, I, in Alfonso Davies, you don't just see a player who can contribute at left back or on the wing. You see a way into the Canadian market, as cynical as that sounds. And that's something that contributes to his value as well. So it'll be really interesting to see what happens next for him. So let's look at this matchup specifically today coming up in about 18 minutes time. It's Bayern Munich. It's Eintracht Frankfurt. And this was a, one of the clubs that you played for, Rob. Tell us a little bit about the club and and not necessarily the players, but what the club's all about. I mean, it's, it's a team that in recent years has done very good in this competition. If they somehow make it past Bayern Munich today, it'll be three to the last four finals they've played in. And they beat Bayern Munich in the 2018 final as well. So what was it like playing for the club and what did they represent yeah no obviously uh you know they, they represent you know what one of the the major cities in in germany so so frankfurt's a it, it's it's a you know very very populated city and and uh you know it's a club for the city so there, there's certainly a lot of pressure playing for that club it's been it's been quite inconsistent during during the era that that i joined um you know i joined when they just got uh, relegated and uh, it was a big push to get to get promoted fortunately we did get promoted that year we had a hundred thousand people in the city with flares, fireworks, cheering us on when we got when we got promoted. So, so it, it's very important for for that city that that Eintracht has success. Again, they were very inconsistent over over the years, and and there's they've definitely been in the on an upward trend. They've been very smart with the the player transfers. Um, you look at uh, Luka Jovic; uh, they they sold him for over sixty million euros, and they sold Haller to West Ham for forty million. Um, so, so they're having success in the transfer market, which, which you know, ten years ago they weren't, they weren't, they were lucky to sell any player. So you, you see, their recruiting, their scouting has gotten a lot more sophisticated. They're finding the right players. Um, so there's, there's definitely consistency. There's, um, you know, there, there's that energy to win now at, at that club, and there's that belief which they didn't have before. You know, with the success they had in, in Europe in the last few years. So this, this year, I'd say is, is sort of a rebuilding year. You know, they've spent over uh, 65 million on transfers. They, they did earn 100 million. Um, so, you know, these are numbers that, that it, it, you know, seven, eight years ago when I was playing for Eintracht, that they, they, they received 100 million euros in player transfers on two players. I mean, that, that's unheard of or that was unheard of. So it just shows, you know, the direction that club's going and, and you know, losing a few key players. You see that, you know, they haven't really found their footing this season, but, you know, it's a team that could beat anyone on any given day, and uh, certainly Bayern is, is not taking them lightly today. Well, they lost to Chelsea in penalties in the Europa League last year in the semifinal. They beat Waldorf Mannheim, St. Pauli, Leipzig, and Bremen to make it to this final. And some interesting context about Eintracht Frankfurt as well, Josh. This was a team that demolished Bayern Munich, it seems like ages ago, last fall, which cost... Um, 
Kovacs' job, and which brought in Hansi Fleek. So a lot has changed over that time, but this is still a team with a lot of talent and capable of springing an upset. Yeah, and you look at their lineup today, a very uh, defensive-minded um, outfit, and, and and that's to be expected when you play a team like Bayern. But uh, no, this is a, a, a tournament that means a lot to Eintracht Frankfurt, winners in 2018. Um, they also got embarrassed by Bayern a few weeks ago, 5-2. Yes. Um, so th- there is a lot on the line for this team, and, and when you are a club that is out of European contention as they are, um, you know, the poll call matters. And this is the kind of tournament, this is the kind of trophy that, as Rob kind of attested to, would mean a lot to their fans, a uh, very passionate fan base. So um, as well as Bayern has been playing, I don't think this is, you know, this is a foregone conclusion. Um, so I, look, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, um, th- this is a team, Ollie. They're mid-table right now. I just want to go through their 11 and get your thoughts on it. Yeah. For Adi Huther, it is a three... Uh, a uh, three, four, two, one formation. Trop, Hinterreger, and Dika, very good center back, and Abraham. Timothy Chandler, the American, starts wide right with Corey Nilsanker in the middle of the park. Toure, wide left. Gasinovic, who scored in the 2018 final, he plays in a two alongside Roda with Andre Silva on loan from AC Milan up top. Yeah, I I think what Josh was saying there about, you know, what's on the line for them in, in this tournament is a key point because I, I wondered, it's not just in the Bundesliga, but in every league, what the motivation levels were going to be like for teams who are coming back with not a whole lot to play for. And and Frankfurt are one of those teams, right? They were kind of adrift of, of the European chase, but they also seem to be safe from from relegation. So you saw them start the, uh, the restart quite poorly. Uh, maybe have to look over their shoulder at the relegation places a bit and and then they promptly reel off a couple of wins right so uh, you just wonder where where the motivation level was for them coming back um obviously today that shouldn't be a problem uh, there's a place in in the final on the line and and hopefully that that kind of uh, focuses them and and they get a better uh, certainly a closer game than they had last time they played Bayern which which was obviously a 5-2 defeat uh, for Bayern Munich, once the other leagues, La Liga, Premier League, start up, they'll still be in the conversation about who's the best team in Europe today or in world football today in terms of club football. Bayern Munich has to be leading that pack undefeated in 20, 23 wins from 26 under Hansi Flick. It's just been an incredible run uh, for this Bayern Munich side. They're starting 11. I mean, it's, it's basically full strength. Uh, Neuer, Neuer Alaba, Boateng, a center back, Pavard and Davies are your wing backs, Goretzka and Kimmich in the middle of the park, Perisic, Muller, and Coman, and Lewandowski up front. Josh, your thoughts on this Bayern Munich side? How good they actually are in today's starting 11? You're kind of getting the best version of every player this season. Like, this is a team that is built on so much individual quality and players having incredible seasons. I mean, a player like Leon Goretzka, who is Kind of an afterthought, I think, to to many players when we talk about world. Very football. good. He's he's bulked up. He can move in the middle of the park, playing sometimes like a ten, sometimes like a six, sometimes like an eight. He's such a versatile player. Uh, he's a big fan of you know the people at uh, Sudcurve Toronto, uh, Bayern Munich's fan club in Toronto. Shout out to those guys uh, who are going to be watching this match intently. But after that, I mean, you can keep going down the list. Uh, Perisic, not their first choice winger. Uh, but a World Cup finalist two years ago. Like, that's not a bad bench option, right? Um, you're just getting players. Muller having kind of, yet again, another renaissance season. Broke the uh, the assists record for, you know, single season Bundesliga. This is a team that just has so much individual quality. And when we talk about the best teams in Europe, the run they're on, I think, is only going to help them to build that confidence if they do have to play the Liverpools of the world moving forward, but there's just so much individual quality. And again, this is a team without their first choice center back and Nicholas Sule, who has been missing for most of the season. You, you know, if ever there was going to be a season that Byron could be toppled, I think heading into the season, we thought maybe this was it, but that hasn't been the case at all. Every player has had kind of the, one of their best seasons in record. And it's just been, it's been a treat to watch. Okay, guys. Uh, Rob, what's your prediction? What needs to happen for this to be a match today for Eintracht Frankfurt to hang in and try to steal something in the end? Yeah, I mean, I mean, to follow up on Josh, I mean, this to me, Bayern's one of the one of the top teams in Europe right now. You look at their lineup; they they have the experience uh, plus 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 the young uh, talent like like Davies, Coman, these players that uh, that can be game changers at such a young age. But um, really, I think for Eintracht, they need to be smart defensively. 
you know, in any cut, in any cup semifinal, um, really any, any team can win. This is the most important game of the season for Eintracht. So they're going to come out extremely motivated, not saying Byron won't, but uh, I think if they're smart defensively, play very compact, um, you know, in the 60, 70th minute, if it's still zero, zero, anything can happen, you know, and then you're going to see, you know, Byron's going to feel that pressure because they, they, they're expected to win. So, um, you know, Eintracht needs to play very smart, but um, offensively, Byron has, has been uh, a joy to watch. They're extremely dangerous, so it's not going to be easy for Eintracht. But, um, you know, if it's, again, if it's 0 0 in the 60th minute, it, Byron's, the Byron players are going to feel that pressure. They need to score, they have to score, you know, and then, and then anything can happen. So that, uh, but certainly I've, I've got my money on Byron. Uh, some quick final thoughts, Ollie. We just have about a minute. Yeah, I, I think Rob's exactly right. I, I think the longer this ga- game goes on and is close, you know, the, the better, obviously, Frankfurt will be feeling. They, they score over 70% of their goals in the second half. A big chunk of those are in the last 15 minutes. So they're, they're a fit team. They can go the 90, um, but they do struggle a bit in the first half. And, and you can see with a lineup, I think I can count six players who have played in the back line at some point this season. <laughs> um, you know, they're going to try and shut the game down in the first half and, and then grow into it as they go on. It worked in 2018. Any chance it works again here today, Josh? I don't word. think so. I don't think so. Just the way the way that Muller and Lewandowski have been connecting lately, I don't see that happening. And I see an early goal from one of those two to really kind of put this thing to bed in the first 20 minutes. Excellent. Uh, we're going to be back post-match with complete reactions. So stay with us across one soccer. We're uh, really proud of adding the DFB Pokal to our uh, growing catalog here at One Soccer. All you got to do is click on the link right at the top of the chat. It will take you directly to the match coverage. You can also watch using our platform on One Soccer as well. Robbie, Ollie, Josh, we'll see you all post-match. Enjoy the game, everyone. And you enjoy the game at home as well. It's on track Frankfurt and Bayern Munich to the Allianz Arena. We go for match coverage.